Right, well, I'm Master Gofferin and welcome to the Super Chip section of Octajam. For this particular special feature, we'll be using an HP 48S calculator to run some of the games. Obviously, we have special technology in order to get the ROMs onto the calculator, which you can kind of see here. It's a very fancy cable that may in fact be a repurposed CD audio cable from the 1990s. Seems kind of appropriate somehow. Anyway, as of recently, Octo has acquired a file output option, which has been absolutely vital in order to do any of the things I've been doing. Once I've got the file, I usually end up renaming it to a four-character name, as that's really all the calculator can display. Obviously, since this is a Jam logo, we'll go for logo. Anyway, from here, we need to start thinking about how we're actually going to send it. The, the calculator uses serial communications, because, as noted, it is from the 90s. Uh, the protocol it uses is called Kermit, which you might actually be familiar with if you're, I guess, old enough. Having got the identifier for my USB to serial adapter, I can now run uh, C Kermit, which should let me configure and communicate with the calculator. Naturally, this process isn't especially straightforward, but there's still a few sites around that can help you out with it. In fact, that's actually where I was able to obtain information to make the serial cable up. There is in fact still quite a large number of resources online for the HP calculators. I think I can realistically say that this project would be dead in the water without hpcalc.org. Anyway, pretty much just taking all of those commands and slapping them into Kermit will only get you so far. I struggled quite a bit to get anything working originally. Uh, it could be because my cable is kind of a bit shonky but uh, a really important command that pretty much makes everything just start working is robust. So I would definitely recommend giving that a whirl if you are struggling to get anything working. Once you've pretty much got everything matching between the two systems, it's time to send the files. Uh, this is fairly straightforward. It's not, it's not incredibly fast, it's not incredibly slow, it works decently. So the ROM is now on the calculator, the only thing that really remains is to run it. And there we go, here's the logo. That's pretty much the process of getting ROMs and onto the calculator and then running them, so I'm basically just going to be doing that. Right, yes, so now we've seen how we put ROMs onto the calculator, it's time to put some of our submissions for this year on as well. However, there is a small problem, and uh, that is that only me and Internet Janitor actually submitted ROMs at a uh, uh, realistic speed for the device. Uh, we, we have a few other things we can put on there to give a try, but from, from this year, so uh, we, we're going to do all of those. But first of all, we're going to look at uh, me and IJ's two games. But I think we should probably clean up some of the junk that I put on here to make it all kind of fancy. So uh, let's just do that real quick. We can... Uh... It's actually kind of annoying to get stuff off of the uh, calculator. It's quite a, a drawn-out process, especially when you've been uh, sneaking things on to try and make nice screenshots and photographs that look like uh, 80s or 90s adverts. Let's just get rid of all of these one by one. Right. Uh, actually, you know what? Uh, since we're here, and well, I might may end up having to delete it, uh, on the calculator I've got a game called Magic Square, uh, and that is one of the uh, kind of original, I suppose is probably not the right word, but it's a game that includes some of the uh, text at the beginning that we talked about in the thread shortly, and uh, if I put it into the uh, command stack thingy, you can see the the text that's at the beginning there. I think there is a way to see more of the text, but I cannot remember what it is. Uh, and so this is as far as I've got with that. Let's delete that too. So now if we go to memory, uh, we can see that we've got about 17k to work with. Uh, being this is the uh, 48s, we only have 32k to work with, and I have several copies of Superchip on here. 
uh, which take up a reasonable amount of space. So I have to do this in several stages. First of all, though, we're going to put uh, sensation and uh, black rainbow on here. So let's uh, let's get on with that real quick. Okay, there we go. Uh, obviously, I tested my game on here already. I know roughly how it's going to go. So we should probably start with that, just to get it out of the way. Uh, one of the interesting things, I suppose, about uh, both the Cosmac and the HP 48 is that uh, in Octo, when you activate the buzzer, all that happens is the outside lights up. Obviously, with XO chip, we now have that sound system, but on both the HP 48 and the Cosmac, that buzzer effect does actually make sounds. And we will hear them in any game that tries to use them such as sensation. I'll try and get the microphone reasonably close. And then I'll just push random buttons just to see. Like it, it seems to run fairly similarly to how I was hoping it would. Now, I will say one thing the cal for the calculator. You know, it, it does have quite nice uh, buttons. Like they're not... Uh, I don't know if they're dome buttons. They may be. Um, I don't know if they wear out much through use, but uh, it's actually quite pleasing to play these games uh, uh, with it, basically, to, to have the, the input buttons. They, they feel quite tactile. They're decent. They're, they're a lot easier to push on a, a keyboard, at least my keyboard. Oh wow, the fun! <laughs> That's some buzzer noise. But uh, like I'm, I'm using the scrolling instruction to to, to move the guys along in this particular one. So we can see that it is competitively fast. Like it's not like completely suffering. Oh, I still love the ending of this game. Uh, and it ends with a sad fart. And uh, I guess that sensation, like it, it seems to work all the way through, just as it does in Octo, so I'm quite pleased with that. Uh, but, uh, like, obviously I have the calculator here. Like, I've, I've been able to test it a few times. And I've got a good idea, so... I'm not that surprised that that worked quite well. What I'm interested to see, what I'm interested to see is how Black Rainbow works. So uh, I guess that's 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 next. Here it goes. It actually seems like it, it moves relatively well. Maybe actually faster than it does in Octo? I guess the diagonals are a little bit slow. But, uh, uh, like sometimes, uh, when you have fairly fast moving objects, uh, you can, you can see that the LCD isn't fast enough to keep up with them. And because of the character size, you know, I think it does a decent job. Is that a bad thing? I have no idea what that is. It's cool though. And we have blah. Oh yeah, we can pause the game. That's right. 
was, I, was, I was pushing around the buttons and I was like, oh god, what's that beeping noise? But um, one of the, the particular quirks is, is uh, the this level not so good. The, the uh, when you, you pause for user input, whenever you give that input, the, the whole game squeaks at you rather angrily. Which is uh, uh, interesting to know. <laughs> I don't think I can get around this guy. That's a, a certainly a sufficiently terrifying uh, death sound. <laughs> you certainly know that you've died. <laughs> I mean, yeah, interestingly, like, nothing has gone peculiar so far. Uh, often, often games can go peculiar quite quickly, especially if they're interacting significantly with memory, which... <laughs> yeah. uh, one presumes this game may well be, considering it obviously it generates a random uh, dungeon. Uh, I, I did check... Uh, if I had any quirks enabled, and it didn't, uh, which suggests that it was just written, or perhaps uh, when it was being tested. Uh, to be fair, I, IJ knows what he's doing, uh, but when it was being tested, it might have been uh, pasted in to a new Octo window. Man, I am sure someone is going to complain. Hey, here we go. Sixty-three. Sixty-three somethings. But, yep. Yeah. I've never been happier. So, uh, before I end this game, one of the interesting things that you can kind of do uh, with Superchip is one of the key bindings, there's, there's obviously there's a buzzer noise. You can actually turn off the sound completely with the plus and minus key, and that makes the audio go around. But you can also push Enter to go back to main, so that's just resets PC, I think. I don't know if it clears the registers, it resets PC. <laughs> it resets the PC back to 200, and you can sort of maybe start doing things that it doesn't really expect you to be doing. Uh, it doesn't seem to have broken anything on this particular occasion, but... Uh... I'm sure there are ways and means of uh, generating some serious problems. Seems a bit happier. But yeah, I think, uh, I think I'm pretty satisfied. Uh, this is... Uh, <laughs> like, if you've given this a play, you know how impressive it is. Like, there's, there's the variety is... Uh, well, there's, there's a lot of variety and, and maybe some uh, issues that I've introduced. But it's uh, a very pleasing little game to play. So I think we're done with that. Okay, so this time we're going to look at Binding of Cosmac and Knight. Uh, let's start with uh, Binding of Cosmac. Binding of Cosmac uses uh, a thousand cycles a second, I think it is. So I, I don't have especially high hopes that this will be very playable. But we can at least see if it runs. I'm I'm pretty sure there's usually like a background title screen here, but there isn't. Uh. <laughs> <What? laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, that that uh, that isn't going very well, is it? So if I had to guess, uh, I mean, obviously this game wasn't written with a realistic speed in mind. Uh, more than likely it wasn't written with any quirks in mind. Uh, so I've, I've just kind of thrown it on here. I haven't really asked any questions or looked at it. Uh, so there's there's probably uh, memory reading issues, like the, the eye pointer isn't being stepped on. So uh, let's just give it a go with uh, 
uh, why well, I, I call it Super Chip C, uh, and it is a version of Super Chip that I have modified to not express the same quirks. Uh, so it should be relatively similar in behavior to Octo. So this should, by comparison, work. But what it will be like, I have no idea. Oh, well, there's still no background, so that doesn't give me especially high hopes. Huh? No. Oh, you know what? Maybe it's actually working fine, and this is just how fast it runs. Because it is a thousand cycles per second, isn't it? Is there a shoot button? I think there was a shoot button. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, I guess, uh... Alright, yeah, I guess we'd best... Swap back to regular super chip. Oh, oh, we've got some action. That makes a difference. I wonder why that is. We're gonna have to try and figure that out, aren't we? Is that a good thing over there? Is that a bad thing? I have no idea what that is. I'm, I think I'm gonna avoid it. Yeah, shut up. So I suppose it's interesting to see what the game is doing in incredibly slow motion. Uh, like you can you can kind of see that it's it draws the whole room, and then removes the doors and puts in like the locked door and the HUD. And by comparison, so that's kind of interesting. But I I <laughs> I, th I think we've seen about as much as we're gonna get. Well, I suppose I mean I can probably win at this speed, but. Uh, I don't think that's that's going to do anything for anyone. So uh, yeah, I think that's that's that one. Uh, and finally, there's Knight. I don't really know what super chip instructions Knight uses right now. I probably should have checked that. All I know is it does use something. Uh, so I I grabbed it and put it on. I also know that it requires a fairly high cycle count. So uh, I guess let's see what happens. Uh, and obviously it has the computer keyboard buttons, but uh, I could I could probably work those out. Whoa! Okay. <laughs> I think I worked out what super chip operations it uses. Uh, I think it might be. I think it might be using large sprites, but in standard resolution. Uh, which, as it turns out, doesn't work. Uh, it's actually not supported in uh, standard resolution uh, on the HP48 to use the 16x16 16 16, uh, sprite. There's a zero line sprite that is, is a much larger one. Uh, it doesn't work in low resolution mode, it only works in high resolution mode. So if I had to guess, this is probably... Oh, and it did crash. That's interesting, because uh, as has probably already been pointed out in the stream, there's the, the bug with this game. So I didn't, I wasn't counting how many times it went through, but that tells you roughly how deep the stat gets and the error you get when it goes wrong. So there you go, that's that. Alright, the last thing I can think to try is uh, two of the submissions for the Cosmac tier this year, Hedgehog, the Drug Dog, and Planet of the Apes, uh, require slightly above the odds in speed. They require, I think, I think something like uh, 30 cycles per second, which is unlikely to go so well on the actual Cosmac. But they might work okay in uh, on the calculator. So I figure, what the hell? Let's give them a go. What's that about? It's a lot of uh, two five fives there, isn't it? Maybe memory. Uh, but uh, fire them up in super chip. See if they work. First of all, just on and just see how they compare speed wise. <laughs> oh, that doesn't work. <laughs> 
I don't know if I was right or wrong, uh, but clearly uh, that's being let down by quirks. So let's 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 try Super Chip C. Okay, there we go. Shit, I have already forgotten. Well, I think I'm gonna bark at this guy. But I mean, the the little dog moves reasonably well. I can get up here. I'm gonna bark at this guy. I don't know if I got that right or wrong. I'm gonna bark at somebody else. Bark at you. You can say. Maybe something is happening there, but uh, I really can't tell. But it does run at uh, competitive speed. Like this, this, this seems to be doing okay. So there's that, I suppose. And uh, Planet of the Apes, next on the agenda. Oh, that does, uh, seems to be working just dandy, doesn't it? Uh, no, uh, no unusual behaviour being observed, so... Uh, and it does seem like it's a relatively... Oh, a simple game. Uh, I suspect that those many uh, umlaut Ys we saw at the beginning of Hedgehog the Drug Dog is probably uh, memory operations. Uh, or at least the, the area in which they will take place. Uh, which naturally is unlikely to be the case with this game since it's just spawning eights that, you, that you're trying to avoid. And uh, yeah, that, that seems eminently playable, doesn't it? I'm interested to see how that performed on the Cosmac. Yeah, not bad at all. I suspect I figured out what the problem was with the uh, with Hedgehog, and that is that I was too far away from the men. So let's uh, give that another go real quick. Yeah, there we go. Oh, I was close. There you go, that, that seems to work just fine. There you go. Hi, this is Doug Crawford, here again for OctoJam 3. We're going to be running some games on a Cosmac VIP, and I thought it would be fun to surround the old Cosmac VIP with some of the machines that came afterwards, playing some games, and uh, we're going to load the games onto a real Cosmac VIP right here which I've loaded the first the first um, set of octo code and fittingly this will be the uh, beginning of of loading the different games that we have so let's see what we've got loaded now there we go so the octojam banner when run on a real cosmac vip detects the vip and displays a different message the VIP Jam, the third, as opposed to Octo Jam, the third. Isn't that cool?
All right, on to shoot third. The author did a YouTube presentation of this game playing on a VIP already, and so I'm just going to quickly go through the controls to show you all here that it runs really well on a VIP. Um, so I'm going to press any key to continue, level in the points, and we can raise and lower the launch area. We can change the angle of the ball with five and six. We can shoot the ball with six. Try to hit the target. Boom. Hit the target. Level goes up. Points go up. <clears throat> Press a key to continue. We'll launch a ball and then uh, try the, the reset options. He's got some ways to escape out of this. Um, nine and eleven. Okay. So if I launch a ball and it's kind of stuck, then 9 lets me redo it, which if I do the same thing again, I'm just as stuck, right? Right. And then B kind of resets the whole level. No? A? A. That's 10. All right. So it resets the level, and I can launch the ball again and kind of redo things. Boom. Very nice. I like this. I think this is really cleverly done. I like Pong games. It was one of my first, well, it was my first home uh, game machine, a Sears Super Pong 2. So um, I love it. Very nice. All right, we got one more game. We'll call it a bonus game, and I'm going to show you how to load it. So there's a reset toggle switch here, which toggles the VIP in and out of reset and running. And if I hold in the C key while I go into run mode, it jumps into the machine language monitor of the VIP. And I can now control the VIP. I can tell it the start address to, to begin loading from which I'm going to put at the beginning of memory and then I'm going to hit B to load from tape and then I'm going to tell it that I'm going to load seven blocks of 256 byte um, packets of data so I'm going to enter seven for seven blocks then I'm going to start it's now waiting for the tape tones to come in and I'm going to start the wave player over here on my laptop and the data will come across in tones, get turned into ones and zeros, and stored in memory. And when it gets the correct amount of data transferred, the screen will come back. And it's almost done. And the screen came back. This indicates that we loaded right up to uh, the beginning of the uh, eighth block. So we went zero through six FF. And uh, that means we got all the data. So now all we have to do is reset and run on the toggle switch, and we'll see what the bonus game is. And it is Planet of the Eights. All right. And let's see. The screen documents what to use in the emulator. So this is the real thing. Um, all right. I think uh, S is 8 on this, so I'm going to hit the S, and 5, 7, 8, 9 is the controls for the balloon, and any key to restart, I think. Alright, so this is kind of like a flappy bird in air balloon form, and I'm not doing very well. All right, but it runs good. It actually is quite responsive. And it's a cool looking graphics. Ah, I made it past. Okay. All right. So that 
is Planet of the Eights. Nice. Next up is Monty Hall. It's kind of a statistical demo at which the author points uh, the reader to a wiki. Um, and it's pretty interesting. I learned it was educational. So, let's see. We're going to pick a door, one, two, or three. And then it's going to show us something that's uh, behind another door. And then do we want to keep the same door, which I picked two, or do I want to change doors? And if I pick the same door, in that case, I, um, I guess I lost. So pick a door. I'm going to pick three. It shows me two. And yeah, I'm going to switch to one. Oh, and I win the big money. So you can read about it, but statistically you're supposed it's best if you change your your um, choice. Um, interesting. Interesting game. Looks like it's implemented pretty cool. I'm going to pick two. It shows me three. I'm going to stay on two, and I'm no good. Of course, this might be rigged to always only do best when um, you change change doors. So I picked door number one. It shows me door number two. I picked door number one. Oh no! I won the money. I kept my door, but I won the money. So it's not rigged. It's uh, somehow random. I wonder how random was done in the game. But the game reviewers will go into all that, I'm sure. Very nice job. Runs on a Cosmac VIP. Next up is Mastermind. Let's step through the screens and see this work. Press any key to advance. Skill of, game of skill, logic, and luck. Designed and programmed by William Donnelly. He is one of our RCA 1802 historians uh, on the Yahoo message boards. Help press 4 for rules. S to start. Let's see the rules. Wow. Symbols instead of pegs. Use up, down, left, right. To play. WSAD. I'm not sure what that is on the VIP. Uh, up and down. Choose the code row. So this is this is a very complete game here. Complete online documentation. And this is probably near the end here. Yes. Okay. And here's the gameplay. All right. Moving these things around. And I really don't know how to play this game. Um, but uh, it looks like it's very masterfully programmed and it all seems to work on the VIP. Looks like a great job. Alright, that's Mastermind. Um, okay try. I suspect this uses self-modifying code and can only run once, but we'll see. Alright, there we go. Hedgehog the drug dog. Drugs. Got the doggy. Can move the dog. A little hard to move. Moves a little slow. And then we can sound the alarm. And game over. I'm not sure this is complete, but I think this is operating the way it's supposed to operate. It's kind of a cool idea. Oh, they're all they all got drugs. Maybe that's not working right. I don't know. 
<clears throat> so if this uses self-modifying code then if I reset this it shouldn't run right the second time so we're gonna reset it run yeah something about how the the reverse video is generated doesn't run right the second time this is the first first game of this set of games the games for this year that um, <clears throat> use self-modifying code because I was able to restart them a number of times each time so there's no harm in that uh, someone would just have to re-download the program if it needed to be reset and restarted. That's all. Alright, the next game, Ghost Escape. I can't wait to hear what the game reviewers have to say about the narrative of the game versus the gameplay. It's hilarious. Um, but nonetheless, the game is very simple and very addicting. It's very small also. It's uh, less than 200 bytes of game. And this is it. All right, and the idea is there's one button to press, and you try to align the uh, the descending bar with the bar that's preceding it. And the better you line it up, the longer you live. And when they're misaligned, the next bar is um, representative of the overlapping portions portion of the bar preceding it and the bar you just stopped. So the longer you can line them up exactly, the longer you live. And it's pretty cool. It's actually pretty addicting. Got to take it easy on the Cosmac VIP keyboard here. I'll wear out the buttons with this game. All right. Anyway, I thought this was very clever. Um, of course, my reviewing isn't important, but for what it's worth, I like this game. All right. Cool. Ghost Escape. Okay, this is Fuse. I had to figure out the keys, but uh, 5, 7, 8, 9, move it, and 6 allows you to put the piece down. So it looks like it works correctly. I'm going to start it here. Move the puzzle piece. Lay it down. I am not good at this game. It's pretty difficult. Got to try to connect the this big piece of fuse to the little one that's burning out before it's too late and I could use about three or four more seconds I think of of leading because I just really can't get this thing connected very well but anyway I, it's a neat idea and it does work fine on the VIP Alright, first up is Chip Aquarium. Gonna start it into action. Press any key to play. I'm gonna hit a one. Got fish swimming around. We gotta keep the fish happy to get points. I'm gonna press the F key to feed the fish. Seems like a good thing to do. Keep the fish happy. All right, and then we got stuff at the bottom of the tank. We can clean with the C key. Ah, fast acting. So you gotta gotta tap it. If I press too hard, it too long, it they all go away. All right. Let's see. D to sleep, and the fish stays steady and sleeps. We can see how we're doing with the E key. Nice. Beeps when you exit. 
screen, it looks like. Then we got a game inside a game. We've got rock, paper, scissors. We can play with a B. And then we pick our selection here. Tie. All right. And then we check our stats again with E. Exit that. And that's about it. It's a really cool. I like it. Very cool creation. All right. And that's Chip Aquarium. All right, this is the cleverly named Ace Attorney, and it's in three pieces. We're going to demo the first piece on the VIP, and uh, it's pretty big. It loaded all the way up to 0B, um, somewhere towards the end of, of BFF. I uh, rounded out to FF for loading on the VIP, uh, but it's pretty big. And so I went through the first one on the emulator and this is all text but it's it's beautifully done so here we go ace attorney and we have numeric pad 4 to advanced text and I'm gonna page through all the beautiful pages in this I thought for as little words as you can do in this kind of a thing that the writing was really good. What a challenge. Power off and load. Game cart number two. Cool. So that's the first load. Ace Attorney, disc one. 